there are three things that meeting organizers should do after their meeting has concluded. They are adding chapters to your videos and maybe giving it a decent thumbnail. Uh, I think we should also copy that recording to a team and maybe change the expiry date. And lastly, let's share the video recording with all attendees. So this includes people who attended from outside of our organization. So let's get to it. We have the meeting recording, it's in the chat. It could also be on the recap tab, but let's open it up from my personal view. Right, so let's go into our view of the, the video, and here it is in Microsoft Stream. Of course, this is where our videos are stored. Um, first of all, I'm going to change the expiry date. I wanna keep this recording so that it is available for people for longer than 60 days. Uh, for this example, I'm going to remove the expiration, but you can change it. Uh, next, let's add some chapters. Now, there's two steps to this. Um, first of all, we'll go over to our video settings, and we'll turn chapters on. So this makes chapters available in our video so that we can add them. Um, and we'll also uh, add a thumbnail. Now, what I have done already is I have exported... Let's go and have a look at the slide. I've exported this slide as a JPEG so that I can use this as a thumbnail. So if I go back over here, not too happy with the frame that has been chosen from the video, you could use that if that's convenient, but I, I want to sort of get rid of the people on the side in the video gallery. So I'm going to choose to upload a thumbnail and we'll choose this very bright and colorful um, thumbnail and we choose done to confirm that that is what we want to do right so that is going to be the thumbnail when we go to share it back to our chapters we've turned chapters on and we could click go to chapters here or we can click on chapters on the uh, tool panel right so adding a new chapter the chapters are going to be added at the point where your playhead is that's when you've played up to a certain point so I do like to start off by at least having one chapter at the double zeros so that we can at least say that that's the beginning of the video easy to get to the beginning of the video that's the intro and you might choose to take this video down trim it and then uh, get rid of the I guess the beginning title that that teams adds but if we play through I'm just going to mute there too so we don't have to hear it and I'll just skip through and one of the things that I like to do is just try and show go back a bit here where the uh, the slides begin and that's that's really the clue especially if I'm doing a presentation where there are slides involved then that is where typically I'm changing the topic so this would be the title slide so let's add a new chapter here so this is talking to copilot and you can see that it's picked up the time for the um, where the playhead is. I'll just skip ahead a, a little more just to find another point in the video. So I'm just skipping ahead to find that slide there and we'll just let that play through till we find it. Now I would be listening in to also hear and make sure that the audio or rather what I've just said um, is also kind of matching up with the change in the topic. And typically when I present, there is a small gap. I don't usually talk right through when I'm changing slides. So this uh, could be to add the new chapter for anatomy of the prompt. Of a prompt. Okay. Now you could go through and make that for each slide. If you're using Teams Premium, uh, or Copilot, you might have uh, the AI has done this for you. It's gone through and picked up when you have um, or picked up the, the key slides that are part of the presentation. Uh, particularly if you're using PowerPoint Live, which is actually a bit later on when I change to using PowerPoint Live. I think it's a bit further along here. Here it is that it starts to understand and know that that's where I am presenting slides. So when that's turned on, it may have already created those chapters for you. But you see the importance of adding chapters. And really the goal is to make it more consumable for people when you go to share the, the recording with them. Now the next thing that we can do is make sure that this recording is in 
stored in the place where it should be. If this was related to a project, then the recording should be stored there. But I've been, I've organized this meeting. I have, um, it's stored in my OneDrive because I was the meeting organizer. And so I need to really move the recording from there to the right place. And it's very easy to do from YouTube. Uh, it's very easy to do from stream. If we go to copy or copy to at the top, this is where we can copy it. You see that there is a move to button as well, but we're going to copy it because we still want the video to be playable from the recap and from um, the, the meeting that the meeting chat that people might have participated in. So I'm going to go through and maybe just uh, drop that into the appropriate team and we'll copy there. So that quietly copies the recording over to the right place and that way at least we've got that recording available uh, in our team. It also copies over the chapters, it copies over the transcript and because it's within our organization. So that's great, really useful. Right, so our last thing that we want to do is make sure that the recording is shared with everyone who attended the meeting. This includes people who are from outside of our organization. People who attend the meeting inside of our organization already have access. Teams takes care of that. So when they go, let's uh, have a look at Laura's experience. Laura can click on the recording and it's going to open up in stream and of course she's going to have no problems watching that video. Easy peasy. But what about someone from outside of our organization? Um, now I've shared this with Megan. She's in a completely different Microsoft 365 organization, but she could just as easily be from uh, an organization that doesn't use Microsoft 365, maybe Gmail, maybe some other email service. So we're going to first of all uh, look at what her experience is, and we might be very familiar with this. When we attend meetings, we go to click that little thumbnail, and we can't play it. So this is uh, Megan, different organization, opens up the meeting, goes to the meeting chat, Okay, and here's the recording, but what do you expect to happen? Didn't work because it hasn't been shared with Megan. It doesn't happen automatically because I guess it's a safety feature that if you said something that you uh, needed to, you know, uh, edit out or maybe you needed to fix something up in the recording before you share it with the organization or other people outside then you've got the uh, the ability to do so before you share it but what we often forget to do as meeting organizers is make sure that uh, people can see that recording so we can do this uh, let's go through again back over to Daryl's experience okay and I'll use share and we'll use the share button to go through and make some specific choices. We're used to seeing this dialog box, this window that pops up to say share it and you might you know might go through the steps of adding the names of the people that you want to share it with but maybe there's 30 or 40 people and you don't really want to type up all the names. You can see down uh, in the manage access that the two people from our organization that's Laura and Matt, can already view the video. So that's already taken care of, but Megan doesn't have access. And maybe 30 other people that attended don't have access as well. So rather than typing people's email addresses in here, I'm going to do a quite an elegant little workaround. I'm going to go to change the link settings, and I'm going to copy the link. Now, I will use people who have existing access, and I'll apply that. Now that seems a bit strange. I'm wanting to share it beyond Matt and Laura. I want to share it with Megan. But when I copy this link, and I'll go back over to uh, the Teams chat, and I'm going to just say, well, we'll just paste it in here. Right. So this, um, it gives me a warning to say that one or more people in the chat uh, may or well, will need to have permission to access this. It knows and it's checked that there's someone from outside of the organization and they aren't already on that access list to be able to see the video. 
So what we can do is change that permission directly from chat before we post it. Let's do that. Um, it is people with existing access, but there's one other choice that I have now that I've pasted it into the chat, and that is people currently in the chat. And that's brilliant because it's going to pick up on the names of the people that attended the meeting and it's going to send them um, an email uh, or rather make it available to them so that they can potentially access it. Right, so let's, let's do this. Let's go through and click apply. Note that I have left it to can view. They don't need to edit the video. So it is people currently in the chat and People who join the chat later will need to have permission again. So this is a point in time where I'm setting this uh, permission. So I send that through. Good. Now let's go over and have a look at what Megan can do. All right, so there is the recording. And when Megan clicks on it, right. And so now we start to go through the process of confirming that I really am Megan and this link is really intended for me. So that's where we confirm Megan's email address. So this is validating the sharing link. I'll paste that in. And what happens now is a code is sent through to Megan's email address uh, to confirm that Megan has access. So we'll go through and have a look at that. Should come through shortly. And we just copy that code and go back to the video and paste that in. Now there's one other thing that Megan might do just to make it easier to go back and view that video for a period of time, you can get it to keep her signed in. So this effectively is like a temporary sign and it's going to uh, just keep her signed in for a, a period of time. Uh, so when we verify, then now Megan can see the video and that can play through. Now just to show you, maybe Megan closes this down needs to come back and watch that video again. So back in the chat, um, she can click on the video and it opens up, it signs her back in so she can watch that video. Okay, so it's important to be able to do this to make sure that people can view that video. We've covered three things that people should do if they've organized a meeting as a way of following up add chapters so it's easy to, for people to consume this video and jump through. You saw that Megan even could see the chapters. Uh, you should copy that video also to the team that you might um, also be storing this information. If it's a project meeting, for example, then you can copy that, that recording over. Um, change the expiry date too, for example. And lastly, share the video uh, so that everyone can watch the video recording. So that was Daryl as a service with three things that you should do as a meeting organizer afterwards. If you like this kind of content and you want to know more about working best with Microsoft 365, then you know where to find me and you know what to do. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.